Welcome back. Uh, I want to spend a little time today uh, talking again uh, about the inverted yield curve condition that we've seen uh, transpire over the past few months. I think it's worthwhile to revisit this issue since it is such an unusual uh, manifestation in the market. What we're looking at now is an example of a normal yield curve. Uh, we have the maturities at the bottom, uh, one month, two month, all the way up to 30 years. These are U.S. Treasury bonds. And in a normal economic condition, the lower the yield, or I should say the lower the maturity, the lower the yield. The higher the maturity, the higher the yield. Typically, bonds offer a higher yield for a longer maturity. And this is something that we'd expect in a normal economic condition because the investors obviously paid more to hold the bond for a longer period of time. From time to time, we'll see what's called a flat yield curve, where we'll have the same or very similar yields across many different uh, maturity spectrums. So the one-month bond pays a 2.43% yield. Uh, the two-year bond pays a 2.45. The 10-year, just a little bit above that, at 2.63. It's not exactly the same, but we can see, generally speaking, the yields are very, very similar. And then we have what's called an, an inverted yield curve. Inverted yield curve is when a shorter term maturity bond pays a higher yield than a longer term maturity bond. So for example, the one year bond pays a 408 yield versus a 10 year bond that pays a 3.51% yield. Now going back for a moment, a flat yield curve is not something that usually lasts very long and it's typically a sign that something's gonna change. An inverted yield curve occurs when the investors sell the short-term bonds. They're selling the one-year bonds. The price of the bonds go down, but as the price goes down, the market is compelled to offer a higher yield in order to attract uh, more investment capital. And that's why they're selling the short-term bonds. The yield actually goes up, and they're buying more of the longer-term bonds. When they buy more of the 10-year bonds, the market does not have to offer as high of a yield. In fact, the yield goes down as a result. Now, typically an inverted yield curve is something that occurs when there's some sort of economic stress. Uh, now, not every inverted yield curve uh, definitely uh, does not predict a recession. However, every major recession has been predated by some sort of inverted yield curve. Now, if you were to pull up the bonds on your own, for example, Bloomberg.com, we can see how easy it is to read. We just look to the yields. We have a three-month yield during this time at a 3.18% uh, yield. The 10-year bond pays a 368. Now, taking a look at the one to 10-year maturities, it's a pretty common uh, comparison. The black line or the black area chart is a 10-year bond yield, which we've seen, we see has progressed to the downside over uh, the past you know, many decades, since 1990. The blue line represents the one-year yield. Now. Typically, the one-year maturity should pay a lower uh, yield than the 10-year, which is normal what we see over here. When the 10-year goes down, the one-year stays below it. The blue line stays above, below it. From time to time, however, you'll see that the one-year bond yield will travel above the 10-year, and that's indicated by these red histogram bars moving down. This is, uh, indicates that we have an inverted yield curve when the one pays a higher uh, yield than the 10-year bond. This occurred uh, around 2000, 2001, again around 2007, 2008, very briefly around 2018, and then or 2019, I should say, and then more recently. Now notice that the current inversion of the yield curve is not as uh, long-lasting so far, but it is much deeper. We have over a half a percent difference, which means a one-year bond at some point has paid over half a percent, half of one percent more than the 10-year bond uh, during the same period of time. Compare that to the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is a blue line, and we can see the inverted uh, bond yield curve occurred around 2000, 2001, at the very beginning of what turned out to be that major dot-com sell-off. Again, 2006, 2007, inverted bond yield occurred again, right before the 2008 financial recession. Very briefly, around 2019, we saw an inverted bond yield, but obviously more dramatically, we have an inverted bond yield condition occurring right now. Now take a look back to the March of 2000. 
The green line represents the one-year yields. The 10-year bond is the red line. Now, in a normal economic condition, remember the 10-year should be above the one-year. The red line should be above the one-year. The one-year crossed above the 10-year right around here, right around mid-2000. At that time, the S&P 500 uh, was trading around 1450, 1500. Notice how there was a major dramatic difference. The one-year bond drifted far above the 10-year bond. But then what happened is as the dot-com crash really took shape, the 10-year bond then regained the upper hand over the one-year bond. Doesn't mean the stock market was done. It actually went a lot further down. But that was the beginning of the end of that particular recession. The same pattern occurred uh, in January 2006 through January 2009. In this particular case, we can see here the one-year bond, that's the green line, uh, initially was below the red line in uh, 2006, but then traveled above. The uh, financial recession began in 2007, 2008, and then the one-year bond sold off a lot faster than the 10-year. So the one-year bond above the 10-year is a precursor to the recession, but it doesn't necessarily have to stay above the one-year. In fact, usually what happens is as we hit the mid and uh, latter part of the recession, the 10-year bond actually picks up steam and travels back above the one-year bond. Now, moving to 2019, the same pattern. The one-year bond, the green line was below the red line, and then we saw an inversion. Even though we saw an inversion, we actually saw the market make new highs, and then the inversion really took place. Now, this particular occurrence, the crash in 2019, was very, very fast, and I don't think it was necessarily classified as a typical financial recession because of of the COVID uh, situation. So this isn't really a great example. Uh, the prior two examples are really textbook as far as how the inverted yield curve occurs uh, running into the recession. And then we move to present day. Starting April of 2022 through uh, October of 2022, we can see the red line, the 10-year bond, was above the green line, the one-year bond, until around July, August. Then everything changed. And when the red line traveled below, the 10-year was below the green line, that's when the S&P 500 really went to the downside. Notice present day, the green line, the one-year bond, is still very much above the red line. So uh, this does not indicate at all that we're near the mid or even the latter part of the recession. At least that's what data so far suggests. Now, we can select uh, the different bonds to really get a good picture of what we're looking at here. We can see the blue line represents the one-year bond. The black line represents a 10-year bond. That first inversion took place, again, around July, August of uh, 2022. We can take a look at the two-year bond as well. The two-year bond, which is another fair comparison uh, to the 10-year bond, that's the green line, is well above. Notice the inversion, though, between... Uh, the green line or the blue line and the black lines. It's pretty significant and it has not narrowed at all to any extent. I would say the inversion is still very much uh, in, in solid placing, so to speak. Uh, now, we can compare the yield curves January through, uh, we January through October for present day, and we can see the different maturity. So the x-axis at the bottom, we have the one month, two month, all the way up to the 30 year again. Now the blue line at the bottom, that shows us what the bond yield curve looked like in January. Notice it was a normal yield curve. The one year bond is the lowest, the two year bond's a little bit above that, and as we move higher in the maturities, this line trends higher. It does begin to flatten out, flatten out around the 10, 20, 30 level. Really, the 2030 is very close. The orange line is February. The red line is March. It followed the same kind of pattern, but really flattened out. The 20-year and the 30-year are very close. I would call that a flat yield curve. April is shown here by the yellow line, trends higher, but then all of a sudden, we see a flat yield curve. Very similar yields from the 3-year all the way through the 30-year. Uh, May is the purple line, green is June. Those show us the same kind of progression, a flattening around the two, three, five, seven uh, maturities. 
And then, of course, we have the black line, which is August. Remember, that was the real big inversion. Notice in August, we hit a top at six months, and then we went to the downside. That was really the telltale sign that the inverted yield curve is here. September was uh, an acceleration in that. Notice September, for example, the three-year bond in August was at 2.5%. In September, it was 3.5%. This difference between the black line and the light blue line shows us how much yields went up over time. Now, in addition to that, we have October. That's the green line. That's present day. Notice how much the green line is above the blue line. Notice how much, in fact, the green line is above the August line, the black line. That's how much yields have accelerated. But this inversion has remained intact, meaning that the June, or I should say the three-year levels, whether it's June, July, August, or even present day, is very much above October. And the big comparison we look for is the one year or two year to the 10 year. And notice present day, we have a four and a half, 4.6% 4 yield on the one or two year bond and the 10 year bond pays a little bit over 4%. So we really do see a dramatic inversion. That inversion does not seem to be shrinking quite yet. And remember, in past times, when we've seen an inverted yield curve, the inversion actually dissipates during the stock market sell-off. So because the inversion hasn't really dissipated yet, we still see a very strong inversion between the 1 and 2 and the 10, for example. I would not say at least this is what the data suggests, that I don't believe that we're at the end of the recession or even maybe in the middle point, at least in terms of what stock market performance is measured. Uh, the stock market really doesn't start selling off until we see the inverted yield curve actually narrow to some extent. And that's what happens when the one-year yields or the short-term yields decline uh, to catch up to the 10-year, which is below that. So we still have time to go as far as this uh, inversion is concerned, but I thought it was helpful to revisit this uh, market because it is such an important factor in analyzing different markets, whether it's equities or fixed income, and also it's used as a very good uh, gauge as far as the economic health uh, that we see out there. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.